All right. So hello, everybody. It looks like we are now live. Uh, welcome to our panel on uh, data science as a vehicle for equity, rigor, and social good. Uh, my name is Emmanuel Shanzer. I'm the founder and co-director of a research group called Bootstrap. Uh, we're one of uh, several providers of curricula for integrated computing, um, and in particular, in this space, uh, providers of curricula for data science. Um, my background, just really briefly, I'm a former public school teacher out of Boston, Mass. Um, prior to that, I spent some years in the private sector and uh, then became an education researcher, looking at the ways that computer science uh, can support and reinforce the goals of, of math, math teachers, science teachers, history teachers, and so on. And so that's what I do. But uh, the best part of my job is that I get to work with and I get to meet amazing friends and colleagues, like some of the leaders of data science education that we've got today. So uh, I'm going to pass the mic now uh, over to uh, the amazing Susan Ettenheim uh, to tell us about herself. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. I'm Susan Ettenheim. I'm a New York City public high school teacher. This will be my 20th year. It's hard to believe. I was grading AP exams in Kansas City a few years ago when I came across an event that sounded intriguing. And that's how I learned about Bootstrap Data Science. I've been following it ever since, and I'm thrilled to be the teacher facilitator for the New York City Department of Education initiative that believes that all New York City public high school students have the access and the right and the responsibility to learn about data science and integrate it across the curriculum. I will pass it on to Rob. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm Rob Gould. Uh, I'm on the faculty at UCLA in the Department of Statistics. I, I'm a statistician. My research has been in uh, uh, stats education. But in 2012, I joined the Mobilize Project, an NSF grant, and segued into data science education. And uh, the Mobilize Project uh, produced the uh, IDS curriculum that uh, is the reason I'm here today. So I'll then pass to my colleague, Su Yen. Hello, everyone. Thank you for being here today. My name is Su Yen Machado, and I work with Rob at UCLA. Uh, Rob and I are two of the co-authors of the Introduction to Data Science Curriculum. Uh, I am an educator as well. I think this would be my 23rd year. I don't know, I've lost track. Um, but it's been a while. Uh, so I'm, uh, I'm a former math teacher. Um, I've worn many hats throughout my career, in the, um, mainly in the Los Angeles Unified School District. And um, now I'm at UCLA promoting data science education and um, making sure that uh, students have access in, to this growing field. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Sherri Ann. Hi everyone, I'm Sherri Ann. And uh, this is actually my fourth year teaching. I'm a New York City public teacher. Yes, I'm pretty new. I'm the baby. And <laughs> I started computer science two years ago. So again, I'm the baby. And uh, I've actually love it. And uh, students, I just think it's really good to integrate computer science into the curriculum. I'm glad that all students are getting this opportunity as well as I'm actually a special education teacher. So I'm especially happy that special ed um, Cation students are also having access to this information. Awesome. And uh, we, we have another panelist who's having a few technical difficulties, so hopefully she'll be able to join us. Um, if she is, we'll, we'll have her introduce herself then. Um, so look, you know, I think this is, of course, the, the CS for Social Good Summit. And it says CS, not DS. So my hunch is a lot of the folks that are out there in audience land are coming at this from the perspective of computer science teachers. And some of you out there may be brand new, welcome. Some of you may be veteran, you know, old heads who've been doing computer science for the, you know, education for the last 20 years, 30 years. Um, I think it's really important just to acknowledge some of the lessons that we've learned from the CS world. And I think that computer science education did not start with a strong foundation for equity, right? It sort of was an elective class and it was sort of like, you know, people who were interested got to check it out. And over the years, of course, the community has now come to realize man, we should probably care about this equity thing, shouldn't we? And we should probably care about social good. Um, and something that the CS world has learned the hard way is that equity isn't something that you build in later. When you try to build it in later, the train has left the station, the horse is out the barn. It is incredibly difficult to bring equity to a field that already has you know, traction and inertia with different design goals. And so the reason that we're hosting this panel here is to say, look, data science is the new thing that's coming down the pipe. 
right? The Bureau of Labor Statistics looks at data science as being both the fastest growing and one of the highest starting salary job positions in the United States projected over the next 10 years. So to the extent that we care about giving our students access to, you know, really important jobs that they don't need to spend years and years and years taking out loans in grad school to get, data science is important. To the extent that we think that data science is a critical thing for all of us to be able to learn, to be, you know, participate in a modern democracy, it's a critical thing. So we want to learn from what the computer science world has to teach us. And this panel is about how do we build equity in from jump when we think about teaching data science? I've just noticed that we've got our, uh, our, our final panelist has just joined. So I'm going to back out and let her introduce herself. There we go. Technical difficulties are always so much fun, aren't they? School's out and I'm still having them. Isn't that lovely? Hi, I'm Joy. Uh, Straub is my last name. I am a teacher in Oceanside, California. That's in Northern San Diego County. I teach data science at the high school level and um, AP statistics. Um, I've been through data science now three full courses with high school students and have a strong passion to see it get into schools. So nice to finally be here. <laughs> All right, wow, yeah, the, the swapping back and forth thing, there's quite a lag there. All right, so we've got the, this amazing team. I wanna direct the first question here uh, to Rob. So, so Rob, just, to, it sounds like we can have a, we can really use a good definition of what data science is. And for bonus points, there's a question in the stage about if you can define that separately from machine learning and AI. Well, I hate to disappoint you. I'm not going to give you a good definition. I'm going to give you uh, uh, the best I can do. Uh, I, I think it's fair to say that uh, there's really no, at the moment, strong consensual definition of data science. It's somewhat in flux. I do think there's consensus that it's more or less an umbrella term that encompasses multiple disciplines that are all involved with the ultimate goal of how do we learn about real world processes from data? How do we use data to gain insight into the world? And there may be many different disciplines involved with different aspects of this, this endeavor. Um, but, but I think for the most part, that's something for the researchers and the um, and, and, and people working in industry. I think what we really need to focus on is what do we mean when we're talking about K through 12 data science? And for us, at least, I think what that means is what the National Academies of Science is called instilling data acumen. Data acumen is this idea, this notion that students are able to be critical consumers of data. They're able to use data to make decisions. They're able to carry out their own investigations and uh, that use data and use that then to answer them. I think it's really important to emphasize we want to have constructively critical people. Uh, we don't want to teach them that, oh, you can do anything with data. You can say whatever you want. We want to teach them that you can actually gain real value uh, about the world and real insight using data. And for us, I think that means teaching students to use software to prepare for analyses and to carry out reproducible analyses, um, teaching them how to share and store data ethically and to develop a habit of mind so that they kind of instinctively say, is this something that I could collect data about and can answer with data? So, uh, you know, it's this day and age, the last year we've seen lots and lots and we continue to see great success stories about what we learned from data and great abuses about it. So it means kind of preparing a citizenry for this new, well, this current world we live in, this data-driven economy. I think, um, you know, as for the machine learning and AI, I mean, those are modeling approaches, if you will, within the broad area of, of, of data science. So sometimes, uh, one of them is used as a shorthand to represent everything, uh, but they actually are just tools within those or, or approaches to problem solving within this broader umbrella. 
So uh, that's my definition. Would anyone like to add more? I'd like to chime in if I could. Um, just because I am a math teacher coming at this from this standpoint, um, data science is truly a combination of statistics and computer. Um, so it's, it melds them and, and without each other being balanced, it's not really truly data science. So it's, it's using computers to do the analysis, but also math. And so I, that's what I am so turned on about is it's just this great marriage of, of statistics and computer science that um, is used, like Rob said, with real data that the kids can just jump into and chew on. And I'll jump in and say, um, Joy, we didn't call each other, but I was thinking along the same lines uh, that statistics plays a really important part in data science and, do and so does computer science. So you have to have both. Um, in my uh, work in promoting data science education, uh, I've talked to a lot of industry uh, people. And one thing that comes up over and over and over again is the importance of that statistics background when doing work in data science. Um, so I think that um, you can't have one without the other when you're talking about data science. And that's really important to make sure that students are able to wrangle with the data as they should. Okay, I'm not sure what happened to my video. I'm trying to work on it, but as again, tech stuff, right? So I'm um, just going to add a real, um, just what everyone has already said. It allows students to be critical thinkers. And in this time and age, they actually need to do that, especially with this advanced technology where they're getting information all over the place. And sometimes this information is not correct. So for them to be able to critically think, analyze information and make sense of it and then present it, this um, data science is, you know, really something that is needed. Thanks, Sherry Ann. And yeah, I mean, I just think to the extent that we're concerned about machine learning and AI, let me just keep it simple. I, you know, I think of machine learning and AI as sort of data science too. In other words, you know, they all sort of share a common conceptual foundation. You need to understand the principles behind data science to get to ML and AI. Um, so that may be a useful construct. And now, of course, this original question in the in the, in the stage chat uh, was also asking us to differentiate what's the difference between data science and computing. And so, for that, I'm going to invite Susan to join us back to speak to some of the differences between data science and computer science. All right. Hi, everybody. I do feel like we've started to um, already discuss that. But you know, computer science is about computers, right? It's about hardware, software, how we use computers, how we use, how we make algorithms. And then we start to study about computer science and technology in life, which I personally find incredibly exciting and incredibly critical for our students to learn. So my student who was the basketball player, once he understood that those very, very high level basketball players had sensors in their shoes that knew when to loosen and tighten the laces in their shoes so they scored better, that was a win for computer science. But uh, you know what? What makes some people live longer than others? Uh, what happened with COVID in New York City where we live? Is a more expensive restaurant a better restaurant? Do students of immigrants at my school do better than American-born students with American-born parents? Those are data science questions. And we're using the same principles, but then we're fighting for that level of understanding and discussing. And as I think it was Joy who brought to my attention, and I love that idea, I should I'll pass it on to you, Joy, if you want to say more about it. But um, data science questions go home, and my data science students do come back. And also last year, during COVID, during quarantine, when students in classes were asked to discuss the current situation, students struggled, like the history teacher, the, the science teacher. How, how do we talk about this? And you know what? My data science students had no problem at all. They had no problem at all. They said, well, where's the data behind that idea? Or what do you think about that? What's like, what makes you think that? What makes you think that? So um, I think that's the biggest data science. And Emmanuel, I'm just gonna jump right ahead because I know you're gonna ask me next, where does it live? And I think I'm already addressing that. And here in New York City, we are very excited by 2025, the blueprint for computer science in New York City 
says that every graduating high school senior will have a meaningful computer science experience. And people have asked me, what does that mean, meaningful? I don't know. Like when I went to the New School Computer Instruction Center and learned Perl in the dinosaur days, was that a meaningful computer science experience? No, it wasn't. Because could I, did I really learn anything? I learned how to type fast and try to keep up with my nerdy teacher who was in the field. But when we bring computer science, when we have a CTLE teacher uh, out in Brooklyn whose students are trying to get jobs in the industry and they can figure out that they can look at the data from Home Depot and they can say, you know, we got a good feature because people are home and look what this data says. They are buying stuff and they are building things and they need us. This is very real. That's across the curriculum, right? And when we have a history teacher and a science teacher who have charts, they've always had charts and graphs in their textbooks. When the students can start looking at them and asking questions about them, that's when data science is across the curriculum and meaningful, right? So we want to create a data science class for students in high school. Um, I would love somewhere down the line, maybe even to see an AP data science class right now. I love to combine it with game design. We talk about data science in the fall and then we build games for social change in the spring, thinking about how we think about social issues because of the data science work we've done in the fall. Very powerful but it also belongs across the curriculum. So that's where I think it lives. And let's see, who can I pass this on to? Uh, Joy, Rob, or I'll just leave and let Emmanuel come back and ask the next question. I'll just touch briefly where it falls in California. Um, we now have it as a third year math class actually. Um, and it is, and I'll talk later on it, uh, but it has opened up an avenue for students to be able to take um, higher level math classes that they would not have normally taken. And so they, uh, and also they jump into computer science from here because they get a taste for it and love it. Uh, and so it really jumps them into, I actually have students taking AP statistics after taking data science where they would have never taken an AP math class ever in their history. They take data science and they go, I love this. I can do AP stats. I love this. I can go do computer science one and two. And so it is a, one of those places where it's kind of funny. It's it's a third year rigorous math class, but it jumps off for them to have other options in their um, course taking. Go ahead, Rob. Sorry. Great. Yeah. I, I mean, that's exactly right. I mean, I, I, in California, it's in math. I think that's trending around most states around the country is putting it in the math curriculum and that makes sense and somewhat because one thing I think we want to teach is that these are tools that can be applied in many different areas. On the other hand, we would also like to see them applied in many different areas. So we'd love to see data science intersecting in the biology course and the history course and in the arts and humanities courses also. But I would also like to be really aspirational and I would like to see data science and comp computer science as its own, sitting in its own home, uh, so that students aren't are always having to say, should I take calculus or data science? Should I take um, you know, AP computer science or data science? I it shouldn't be uh, one or the other. We want to open up this pathway. I, I think uh, you know, data science is something all students should take. And anything we can do to make that happen is, is, is uh, important. Um, Sherry, right. Sherry, yeah. oh, I don't know who, I lost track of who to pass it to. Sherry Ann, did you want to add to that? Okay, yeah, I, I wanted to add, but Rob did touch on it in regards to science. I do, I have taught science as well, and I do think data science is actually applicable to multiple homes as well. And it would be interesting for students to actually analyze data based on scientific um, exper experiments that they are doing in class, being able to apply this and, you know, make sense of what they're actually doing, making it more concrete and relatable to them. Yeah, I, and I do want to piggyback on that. So I want to urge, I think a lot of the audience is computer science teachers right now. And first off, that's great. That's fantastic. You should be using some data science in your computer science classes, because if you're already teaching programming, this is yet another fantastic application of using programming to answer some of the questions that Susan mentioned and many other questions that students have. And as, as, as Rob and Joy mentioned, you, we need to be building bridges to reach out to the math teacher down the hall, to find the statistics teacher in the classroom and say, hey, guess what? There's a way to teach math and, and statistics in an applied way. And I, as the computer science teacher down the hall, I can support you. But I think, you know, Sherry Ann hit the nail on the head that it's important that we enlist multiple teachers here. There are some tough questions that matter a lot in data science that are way outside the realm of computing. 
that are way outside the realm of math, right? Some of the sensitive questions around things like, you know, do the children of immigrant parents do better in school than native born students? Or, you know, or flip, flip that a little bit, do immigrants commit more crimes, right? This is a real social justice issue. We hear pe you know, people tossing around these phrases that can be really inflammatory and really upsetting. And our students feel that. And you know what? The history and social studies teacher in your school may be supremely well qualified to have that discussion. And if you open up a history book, every dozen pages, there's a chart, a table, or a graph. So those teachers teach data as well. They just may not realize it. And NGSS modeling, you know, modeling physical phenomenon with data is all over the place. So I just want to, uh, I wanted to throw in here that this is a, a movement that needs, that literally won't happen if we just say that there's one home for data science. It does live everywhere and it needs to live everywhere. So I want to move on to the next question here. Um, and, you know, this one's directed to you, Suyen. Why should folks who care about equity be especially concerned with who has access to and who is included in data science? Why does that matter from an equity focus? Thank you for the question. And that one, this question is really important to me. Um, as I mentioned in my introduction, um, I worked for LA Unified when I got involved in this back in 2011. So I've been in the data science world since then. Um, and you know, we were the first to create a course, Introduction to Data Science, for high school students. And so because of where I worked, LA Unified, um, and if you know the demographics of, of Los Angeles Unified, you know that we are talking about students who need access, who need uh, to have these opportunities. So data, we've, we've seen through the years and now more than ever that, they, that it plays an important role in today's world. And we have to have citizens that become fluent with all aspects of data, both consuming and producing. Um, in today's data inundated society, we require students to not only consume, but also um, become producers. The ultimate goal, therefore, is for students to see their world through the lens of data and become empowered to investigate it. It's not just your, let me sit here and teach you, it's, it's or talk at you. It's really giving them those skills that will allow them to investigate their world and make it relevant to them. So when you ask, why should we care about who can take ideas? I say that data, I'm sorry, data science. I say that data science is no longer a luxury. Um, that's just a course available in some elite schools. Fluent use of data has become a necessity for future success in both career and citizenship. So now more than ever, we need to make sure that every student has access to data science education. Decisions in industry, government, education, healthcare, and virtually all sectors of life are being driven by data. Working critically is a necessity. Students must become proficient at asking questions, not just the teacher asking the questions, but the students must learn how to ask the questions, uh, interrogating the data, analyzing that data. Um, maybe it's analyzing data that they produce themselves or from a, from a data set, uh, making inferences and using their work with data to support arguments. So all of that needs to be taught because it's something that, you know, having been in education for about 23 years is not that it's included in every course. And so they need to, uh, students need to have access to it. So let me see. Um, anybody want to jump in? Let me see. Mm, there's a question. What are, uh, okay, Rob, go ahead. Well, I'll just build on that with two quick words. I mean, I think data science is both uh, a civic, a civil right. And I mean that in this, if, if you haven't read the book, Data Feminism, I highly recommend it. And they point out that often by the time the data arrive on our desktops, it's kind of too late. The people who collected the data had a say in how to formulate and phrase and stage the entire process. What we wanna do is give that power to the students so they get to phrase and form the whole process and the shape the debate. Uh, so it's a civil civic civil right, but a civic responsibility. And I think, you know, I don't have to say too much more about that because we've seen just how bad, disastrous public policy can be when it's separated from, from um, meaningful and engaged 
and uh, meaningful engagement with data. Absolutely. Thanks for adding that, Rob. And and so you know, I want to flip the coin a little bit. So on the one hand, of the, on the one side of the coin is for people who care about equity. Why is it so important that we make sure that data science is available to every student? That every student has access to that door, the classroom door behind which data science is taught. But of course, once the student walks in that door and enters that classroom, there's a whole other host of things to, to, to be considered to make sure that that student feels welcome, that their, their, their level of inclusion equity is available to them. So I want to uh, pass the mic over to Sherry Ann. How does data science, you know, positively or negatively, right? What are the, what are the opportunities and challenges affect diversity and equity in the classroom? Okay, well, sorry, just making sure I'm unmuted. So it actually helps. I think data science actually has different entry points. You are able to target students based on the interests that they have. And this allows them to take part actively into data science. They're able to analyze information that they already know because it's also based on their domain knowledge. So students, you can target their interest and build up on that interest as well as to, sorry, like you're allowing them to question and challenge political information that's already out there. So providing them with this opportunity is, it's really good for them to actually see that data can be influenced negatively and positively, like it's biased, it can be biased and therefore, they are able to make their own analytical criticism about the data that they're receiving. Awesome. And this is a complicated issue. I'm curious if any, anyone else in the panel wants to speak to some of the, what are some of the, 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 the do's and don'ts for, for folks looking to teach data science with an eye towards equity? I think it kind of flows into some of the things I was going to say in my question, um, Emmanuel. Uh, you want to just jump into that and maybe we can sure. tie in. Um, Absolutely. You said what equity issues should we be aware of or yeah. things like that. But um, the, what I was, just what Sherry Anna just said, the entry points are huge. There's multiple entry points. And having taught this three times now, I have special ed, I have English learners, I have uh, students that would we call math lacklusters, maybe. I have students who are math whizzes, I have students who are computer science whizzes, and they're all sitting in the same class together. So talk about equity, they all come in, and they all have a place at the table. And that's what is the beauty of this course, is that they can come and what, what, um, our courses have done is to really give the kids choice. Like choice is huge. They get to choose right away a data set of their interest and begin to work on that. And so it, when they do that now, they bring their prior knowledge that maybe others in the class don't have. Maybe they're not not been the top math student, but by golly, they know about Pokemon in and out. And so they get onto the Pokemon data set and they begin to just thrive and stand up and present in front of their peers. And so it does this leveling of a playing ground. So this is like the do's, give them choice. Give them choice in the matter. And I, I even um, give them choice in how they get assessed by me. Like there is a formative assessment each week and they're kind of choosing how they answer either with a Flipgrid video or with a Google form, some open-ended questions. And so they're in charge of their learning. They connect it to what they've done and they progress. And I have seen these students who maybe would have never been a computer someone asked in the question about computer science do you have to be a computer science programmer to be able to teach this class and the answer really is no you come alongside and do it and the students don't have to either but by the end of this course there's a love for it and there is a, a basic understanding of how to use it and that you're not just doing it for computer science sake but for the sake of answering some very large questions that you're interested in and I've seen my students now take this learning into their other classes and use the computer program to answer class uh, questions in other courses so it is really uh, to me it is it is huge another do is you keep rigor don't dummy it down just because it's a third year math class for us uh, as an option doesn't mean it's going to be less rigor rigor is important you they are going to become data scientists by the end of this class and you keep that goal in front of them they are formal data scientists and they produce a capstone paper at the end that is sometimes 15 pages 
pages of research they've done on their question using the computer. And I'm going to put one in chat, a link to a paper in chat that you could save off and look at later. I'm also going to put in chat a uh, one of those open-ended video questions at the end of a core of one of my courses of a student. So you can hear directly from the student, how they feel about how, how this class taught them. So I'm going to put a couple of things in uh, the chat for you. Okay. So uh, I don't know who else, Sherry Ann. Yes. I just wanted to add that, you know, doing um, this with my class and some, they, they all got a choice to do what they wanted, but some students were able to dive deeper into data sets like movies. They thought it was like simply just looking at movies and how much they made, but they were able to dive into social issues, you know, looking at people of color, like their lead roles in these movies, female lead um, movies, how much they actually made internationally and domestically and it just generated more discussion and more questions and it was just rich and very rigorous so it, it's really a good um, way to get students to talk about things that they're interested in and I'm being told that we've actually got a few minutes uh, to go over time just a few so I'm wondering if uh, if maybe Rob or Suyen and then also back to you Joy I just want really, uh, just briefly what are some assessment options teachers are asking about assessment in data science. Yeah, so I I really have have um, played around with this over the three years I taught this course, and I've come up with this Flipgrid video is wonderful. So I have a main guiding question, um, and they go through and they but yet they videotape themselves for three minutes just addressing how it connected to them to their learning, their process in the week. Um, and I, I mix that up with a Google form every week. And we're really big on notices and wonders. I do a lot of notice and wonders weekly. So they have to start off, what did you notice this week in the in the work we did? What did you wonder about? And then I give them a guiding question that might be more technical about the programming or something like that for them to share in the Google form. So it's open-ended. They get to tell me what they're doing and to connect it to the course. And so everyone has this sense of real success um, on their own. And then I also have the students interview each other, you know, like they'll ask the question and then they videotape each other. Of course, this last year, that was all uh, not able to happen. But prior to COVID, they could then say, hey, how did you do? And then they film this interview and share it out on Flipgrid. So then I have them watch them and see what other students are doing. So those are just some some other ways to just keep it formative and open. Rob, you want to go or you want me to jump in? Yeah, yeah I guess I'll you know, Maybe I was going to go say ahead. what Suyen was going to say. I mean, so I, yeah, what Joy is saying there are great examples. I think um, data science is also about doing things. It's about understanding and demonstrating understanding. It's about doing things. And so project-based assessments, I think, are really the strong point. Uh, but I also, like Joy was saying, these, these daily formative assessments are really important. I mean, so like we designed our curriculum so that, you know, every day, I mean, this is not unique curriculums, but, you know, every day there's a learning outcome and then uh, the activities and things are designed so that the teacher gets a lot of insight into where the strengths and weaknesses are in, in the understanding of that. So um, uh, I'll, I'll pass that back to Suyen if you want to add to that. And if not, Emmanuel wanted to add something. Uh, no, just piggyback on what you said, the, the project-based uh, type of assessments are really, uh, data science lets itself to those types of assessments. And in our curriculum, we really focus on the data cycle, which is a framework for conducting statistical investigations. So the students put everything that they learn into that one uh, assessment. But could so, I piggyback on the now. projects just real quick? That is in my, uh, that is so much a huge part of my work with the kids too. And they, the students even created their own project. They said, Ms. Job, could we do this project? I'm like, oh no, no, you can't make your own. No, come on, yes. It was exciting that they were so into it. They had a project that they wanted to design. And so project-based learning is really big too for this. And um, what's cool with this is that they gather their own data. You know, they, they come right in and tell me, some things and go into a Google sheet and they fill it in and we use class data to begin analyzing, uh, analyzing. So it's not just data sets that are out there on the net. It's also our own data that we use. And again, that causes engagement because they're looking at themselves. Just to quickly add to, um, sorry. Um, yeah, the project base and them being able to present that in a PowerPoint format. And they were, they were able to take ownership of that, presenting their charts that they were able to create using data um, science, which 
they felt accomplished doing this, that success. I'm looking at time. Yeah, and I'll just add a few things um, as far as assessment goes. And by the way, there was a question in the chat looking at, you know, where do we find some good data sets? And uh, I just shared a link to one of our lesson plans. Ignore the lesson plan. Just scroll through it until you see our library of data sets. Um, so, we, you know, we've got data sets on everything from Pokemon to climate change to the New York City stop and frisk data set to the Spotify data set. And these are freely available for anyone. So if you're an IDS teacher and you want to grab some of these data sets, please feel free. Um, if you're, you know, uh, course Kata or any other curriculum, the data science community is really friendly. We share materials all the time. So please feel free to grab those data sets and run with them. As far as assessments goes, a couple of things that we've learned. Um, so first and foremost, in a computer science class, obviously you wanna be grading more than just the code, but it's a strong temptation to just grade kids on code. In a data science class, you absolutely cannot do that. Yes, the code has to work, it has to be bug free, but what you're grading is the analysis. It's the higher level sense making. It's not just the code they write. So this is something that, again, other subject area teachers are very comfortable with. For many of us computer science teachers, we may have to stretch a little bit and make sure that we're, we're talking to the history and English teachers to make sure that the analysis makes sense. Talking to the statistics teachers to make sure that students are writing correctly about their findings. Other forms of assessment that make sense in this space, um, data can be misused. I know there's some questions floating around in the stage chat about, you know, how do you teach students to be critical thinkers? Um, and you know, uh, Saber, of course, I see an older question from a couple of days back asking about, you know, how do we, how can we use this stuff to push back against the uh, the critical race theory backlash? And I would just sort of say this: Look, the I think it would be a disaster if we taught bad data science. I think it would be worse than teaching no data science, because bad data science essentially teaches kids that data science is whatever you want it to be, right? Like, oh, I just wrote some code, and here's a chart, and here you go, and then like that is a problem. What we really want to teach is the rigor. And one of the ways to teach rigor is to give kids intentionally slimy and misleading statements about real data. And so this is a form of assessment that, that a number of curricula use, not just bootstrap data science. Um, I believe IDS does a form of this as well. I know um, some folks at Course Cotter do stuff like this, where basically you show kids some data and then you show them a statement that is technically correct, but super misleading and slimy. And the job of the students is figure out why it's slimy. And that's a fantastic way and a sort of a low calorie way to get students to think about how can data be misused. So that's a, that makes for a great assessment project. Um, and of course, if you're having your kids do research projects, it's really fun to have them put on their goatees and be, you know, if, if, uh, if you know, Su Yen is doing a research project, she also gets to be evil Su Yen and publish a copy of her paper for her peers that is the worst, slimiest, crappiest kind of data analysis with utterly misleading claims and terrible threats to validity. Um, and then she gets to trade trade papers with you know evil Rob or evil Sherry Ann, and they each get to figure out what exact what kind of games was this person playing. And so that's one way to approach rigor that's really fun and really engaging, um, that helps students recognize like that's how we need to be critical consumers of data. That's what we know what to look for. So all of these are different forms of assessment that can be done that are in a really fun way. Um, and there you know my favorite statement from a student is you've ruined me. Now I can't I can't look at data without checking out what's going on behind the scene. I said, no, I made you, I didn't ruin you. <laughs> there you go. So uh, I know there's probably a lot of questions about where do we get this stuff? So Rob, we're gonna pass the mic to you and you get to bring it home here. So the question is, how can a teacher get training or materials to teach the darn thing? <laughs> well, you know, I was all prepared with a slide, but I'm not allowed to share. I'm going to type, copy and paste a whole bunch of stuff into the chat window rather than sharing. And I know that that's not quite adequate, but maybe if someone can get me, there we go. Uh, now I can share uh, and I'll share this tab, which has just that information. So I'm hoping there'll be a recording of this and you can hit pause to get at it. But we did kind of put together a set of resources of where to go. And uh, this looks list looks long, but you'll notice you know, from the URLs that it's kind of a, a few um, sites are kind of, um, collecting and co uh, collating a lot of information. Um, down at the bottom are the download sites for uh, Bootstrap World and IDS. Uh, and I wanna draw your attention to the International Data Science in Schools Project. This is a collaboration of computer scientists and statisticians um, from English speaking countries. Uh, and it's a collaboration of the uh, computer science 
professional associations and the statistical science associations in those countries uh, to produce a pretty complex framework, but one that you might find interesting at least uh, for thinking about your own, your own work there. Um, the other thing I really want to draw your attention to is because I was part of this is, is the gaze pre pre K through 12 report, which is a list of resources, uh, kind of a framework, if you will, for kindergarten through 12th grade of what some of the main, um, thinking notions are what the basic conceptual understandings are that need to be developed. Uh, it is a somewhat light on the computer science, uh, something I hope that future iterations will improve, but I think it's a great starting place. Uh, so on behalf of all of us, we are very honored to have been able to talk to you and uh, look forward to having your questions.